It does seem like linear time, the belief in linear time is at the bottom of everything of this world. So when we pull the plug on guilt, we're really loosening from this assumption of linear time. I know a lot of times when I seem to go around the world and travel, um, time is just so assumed. And um, I have to tell this story at the beginning because I went to Australia one time and I took a flight from, from, I don't know if it was Queensland to another, they have different um, states down there, but I, we flew from one place to another and just as the plane was landing, the man who was sitting in the seat next to me, who had not spoken to me the whole trip, uh, just turned to me as the plane was coming down towards the runway, and he just said, you know, time is a crazy thing. <laughs> and it was the first words that he said, he didn't say hi or anything, he hadn't spoken to me on the whole trip, he just turned to me and said, time is a crazy thing. And I said, tell me about it. <laughs> and he went, as the plane was landing, hi Joe. Hi David. Good Welcome. To Good to see you again. Oh, our friends are piling in here. So I said, tell me about it, and he said, well, and he took, went on to tell me the story about how he, he has a house that's right in between two, two different states in Australia, and he had a cell phone plan where he had three minutes in, in one uh, state, and in the other one he, he didn't have, he got, there were lots of other charges, and I think one day he forgot and maybe made a call from his back porch and got some astronomical uh, bill uh, from the cell phone company because his house was literally divided into two cell phone territories based on the political boundaries and, and he, he was telling me this whole story as we're landing, you know, about how time is a crazy thing that he got charged all this money just because there's a time zone running like through the middle of his house. And those are the kind of things though that start to remind us that, that that time is relative, like Einstein said, that time and space are part of the same illusion. Jesus talks about that in the Course as well. And that's why we're in heaven, we're used to stableness and we're used to constancy. We're used to constant love in heaven. And in, in time-space continuum, it, there's nothing that's constant. And so that's why we, we, when we have irritabilities and annoyances, things that come up, it doesn't matter what it seems to be about, or even if we're just slightly annoyed and slightly irritated, it's just this reverberation that, that in time and space, being identified as a time-space being is, is really far from what we actually are as eternal beings at home in God. And so all the problems that we seem to experience on earth, we could say throughout the course of a lifetime, are really, it's like a fish out of water. Uh, imagine a fish flipping on the beach uh, out of water. It's like we seem to have taken on a mask or construct of being a human being when we're actually spirit. So it's very much like the fish out of water. It's, you, you can never be content in anywhere except in that natural state of beingness that you were created in by God. And that's where all the seeming problems and issues come on in earth, is trying to like be a fish out of water. Fish wouldn't last very long on the beach. It would probably flip, 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 and shake around a bit, and then die. And that's pretty much what humans do. They kind of flip, 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 <laughs> and they shake around a bit, and then they die. Uh, it's quite similar to the fish on the beach, because they're not in their natural environment, which is heaven, or nirvana, or eternity. So, today we're going to be sharing, we're just going to be joining with you, and it's almost like that's the graciousness of the Spirit. It joins us in the mind, wherever we believe we are, whatever we believe we are, whatever condition we believe we're in, the Spirit reaches us and it's like, take my hand and we're going back to eternity. We're going back to everlasting happiness. Not just the little glimmers that we have here and there. 
Uh, I was talking of a, to a Syrian friend of mine today, and and she's now she made it out of Syria, and now she's in Dubai, but it's taken her years to kind of make it out of Syria, and she was talking to me how limited she felt her life was in rural Syria, and then she was telling me today how when she was much younger, she was just looking at her limited life and looking at Syria in general, saying, you know, being a, a, a girl over in Syria, she felt that her opportunities were very, very limited, and but she noticed how fake everybody felt, like the, the community, her family felt fake, the community felt fake, the country felt fake, the cultural felt fake, Every, everything felt like it was superficial, like everything just glossing things over, superficial, like everybody's going around going through the motions, but there's no real depth or authenticity. So she told me today, she wrote when she was younger in an article, I wish something would come along to my country to really shake things up. To shake us out of our fakeness, and she said, oh, "I wrote that before the war." <laughs> and <laughs> so we got Assad and United States and Russia. Oh, it shook up uh, in the last few years. It really shook up a lot. And she got out <laughs> to another thing that she says. It's still. I still don't feel free. I still don't feel like I'm in my natural environment. I, she just prays and prays to God. You know, to know God and to not be attached to anything, and she just keeps praying and praying, please God, show yourself to me, reveal yourself to me, and and her circumstances seem to be shifting a little bit here and there, but she's, now she can't really get out of Dubai. Uh, her Syrian passport is not really accepted <laughs> in many countries. She might be able to make it over to India or a few places, but, but it's all just symbols, everything in this world that seems to be a limitation, even travel limitations are just part of this belief system that we still are something that we're not. And even when we have people that seem to be affluent and famous and mobile, they can fly to any country they want to at almost at any time, uh, it's still not the freedom of knowing our home, our true self in God. You know, it seems to be, in the, in the world of degrees, it seems to be greater degrees of freedom. Although in the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, what do you want? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. He juxtaposes the mind and the body and he says, one, if you search for it in the mind, you'll find it. You'll find the true freedom. If you search for it in the body, you will, you will only find hallucinations of it or substitutes for it and you can delude yourself into thinking even that you're a free person. You know, the Cold War, the Iron Curtain, or slavery, or uh, various terms of, forms of imprisonment like Gandhi and Mandela and, and so forth. Those are all illusions of slavery and then the ones who seem to live in free countries, the free enterprise system, <laughs> free, you know, even though we're told there's no free lunch and you got to pay for everything, there's seemingly these degrees of freedom and those are illusions of freedom because all of them are still related to body self-concept and what we're learning from the Course is true freedom has nothing to do with the body. It's actually, you might say, escape from the body. Escape from the linear time-space continuum would be true, true freedom. So that's really what we're here to talk about today: is is true redemption, true emancipation, uh, true freedom. I bet there's a song in there around that. <laughs> you look at me like. <laughs> I just love it. You're like. So that's what we're here to talk about today, just the end of the time and space continuum. <laughs> that's right. Well, we're the guilt unravelers, you know, let's unplug the, the beast. <laughs> let's do a good job of that. The fox in sunlight, its eyes open wide. Sincere to welcome, and its happy smile.